Hello, hello. It's so good to see everyone, such familiar faces. We've got heel, current heel students, incoming students. This is exciting. All right. Welcome. On behalf of the Department of Educational Leadership at Fresno State, I would like to invite you to this breakout session where we will be focused on our ePortfolio um, students. The title of this session is ePortfolio Professional Competen Competency Models for, for Higher Education and Student Affairs Leadership. So we have with us today, Caitlin Spencer, Stephanie Alvarado, Ruth Salazar, and Ruben Reyes, who will be presenting on their ePortfolios. And then um, what's going to happen is we will have them present and uh, about eight minutes each, and then we're going to save some time for questions and just some audience engagement. Before we begin, um, please take a moment to ensure that you have a strong connection, set aside any potential distractions, everyone should be muted. Um, or I will mute people if needed, um, but that hasn't been the issue. I'd suggest you turn off any Wi-Fi for our presenters, uh, any Wi-Fi connections or anything like that to ensure you have a wider bandwidth. Please note that this live session is being recorded. And then um, again, thank you for our session. And then realize I didn't introduce myself, but I believe everyone here knows who I am. Um, so we will leave it up there. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to go ahead and ask Ruben, um, Stephanie, Ruth, and Kate to go in that order. Ruben, why don't you get us started and share your screen? Yeah, definitely. So hello, everyone. Um, so for this portion, I'll go ahead and begin sharing my screen for my ePortfolio today. Okay. So let me see. I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat and try to drag it to the side very briefly. Uh, okay, cool. So to get started, um, as you may know, the portfolio is really about us. It's kind of just to highlight, you know, who we are, the work we've done, and, you know, what we believe in, especially in the HESA profession for the, you know, the higher education student affairs profession. So to get started, I'll go ahead and present my welcome page, my homepage for this portion. And so it just provides a little bit of information about me and how I'm from Los Angeles area, you know, from my point there, graduated 17, and then I'm currently enrolled in Hill, and how I'm also in the Army National Guard. And so I really like this welcome page just because it provided me the opportunity to kind of show you like two identities that I have for the most part. One, you know, as a as a professional, and then one as, you know, as a, a U.S. Army soldier, because I feel like these two identities are the ones that take up the most of my time uh, when it comes to uh, just in general, my personal life, my work life, my professional life. And so I went ahead and I included my personal philosophy here. And so uh, just to, you know, summarize it real quick, really short, you know, I, I like the quote, the world is filled with good people. If you can't find one, be one. Because personally, to me, uh, my philosophy, what I believe in is just paying it forward. I really believe in trying to, uh, help others it's this altruistic sense of you know we've all gone through stuff and we all have this experience we all have this story to tell and so I really want to encourage not only the people I cross paths with but like the students and even you know the people that work above me that uh, storytelling is a very very powerful tool and that if we can use our story to encourage motivate and inspire others do it by all means pay it forward help others and it's all about you know the common good and so next I'll go ahead and move into my resume portion. And for this portion, it's super simple. It's just, you know, hello, here's my resume, here's my email if you need to contact, contact me if you have any questions. And so here you can predominantly see that most of my previous work experience has been in education, whether it's in, uh, whether it's in higher ed, you know, uh, K-12, stuff like that. And then I went ahead and highlighted some of my volunteer experience. And this one, I predominantly really take pride in Merced County Project 10%. I started since I was a freshman. I was a lead coordinator for after one semester, just, you know, the, the, the program director just kind of see my potential. And she was just like, hey, you want to come as a coordinator? And I was like, yeah, of course, I'd love to. And so I really 
I really love to keep that up there because that was just one of my hallmark moments of my undergraduate experience. And then from there, I went ahead and just added some of my, my army experience. And, you know, to say the least, um, being in the army really provided me with a lot of confidence and a lot of leadership building. I feel like that was huge in my, you know, in my career in general. And so to go ahead and go next, I'm going to go ahead and share the ACPA NASPA professional competencies. And so I went ahead and included all 10 of them here. And from here, you know, you have the personal ethic foundations, value philosophy, assessment, evaluation and research, and, you know, so on and so forth. And so I went ahead and included all of those. And for today, specifically, I'll be talking or showcasing uh, two of them, which is values, philosophy, and history. And then I'll be showcasing the student learning and development. So to get started with the values, philosophy, and history, um, for each, both of these competencies that I'm going to be talking about, the general outline is I provided a view of how I see the competency. I provided some examples of some of the work that I've done throughout my career and throughout uh, my graduate experience with the HEAL program. And then I provided a little growth portion of it. So to get started, um, you know, values, philosophy, and history, my view about it is it's, it's really strong. I feel like values, philosophy, and history of the HES profession, it provides roots, provides a foundation of where, you know, student affairs comes from. And so I really like to just emphasize that getting to know the roots, just like we like to know the roots of ourselves is very important. And so I really, really just wanted to showcase this because I felt like this was one of my most predominantly important uh, competencies that I really liked that stood out to me. So some of the work that I've done that kind of highlights this competency that I feel like um, helped me grow in this area, you know, because each of us may have different you know, areas where these assignments can uh, certainly apply to. I feel like these assignments that we've done throughout our graduate experience could be applicable throughout all the competencies. But to highlight for this portion, I included my positionality statement and my leadership philosophy statement. And so my positionality statement, very briefly, you know, it just helped me provide a theoretical framework to my own thoughts. It kind of helped me um, kind of look at the past and kind of what I've been through and then just put a theoretical framework to it and kind of just give me a scope, a lens, and really help me put into perspective this academic vibe or this academic, you know, scope to how I view and to how I see the student affairs profession. And then second, I put my leadership philosophy statement just because I feel like it just plays a huge role in just overall how I see the values, history, and uh, uh, philosophy of this profession. And so one thing that I really love about this competency is that they incorporate um, civic engagement. And so with this, you know, my leadership philosophy statement, it, it just totally similar to my philosophy statement, right? It's all about this altruistic feeling, just paying it forward. And so I went ahead and I included my UC Merced community engagement center pictures just because, you know, this was one of my first experiences doing a living learning community. And so I really got to um, learn a lot about myself throughout this process. And I really got to learn all about um, just where I stand with the, with the student affairs profession and working with students. And so really quick, this was just a service that we did that I was actually in charge of planning and it was in Richmond. It was in, uh, it was for the watershed project where we actually got to go out there and just, um, work on the community. It was really awesome. It was super, super awesome. So next up, I'll go ahead and talk about my student learning and development. And for this one is pretty similar to, you know, what I said, but it's what, what captures my view on this competency is just the development of students and just being able to reflect our own, on our own experiences and pay it forward. And so I really liked, you know, uh, the assignments that, you know, Dr. Pryor really encouraged us to do or that he assigned us because a lot of it was a lot of self-reflection. A lot of it was thinking about ourselves, who we are, where we come from, and really applying that to the student affairs profession. So for this one, I went ahead and put my student development autobiography and my I am poem. And both of those assignments really, really allowed me to self-reflect on who I was, what I've been through, and kind of what I want to do and who I want to be. 
And so I really love this competency again, because it really provides us with this groundwork, this, this lens of, of our past and how we're gonna look towards the future. And yeah, so from there moving forward, I went ahead and just put a contact page to summarize and to sum it all up. And so, you know, if you ever, you know, read anything that piques your interest, or if you want to start a conversation about anything, I went ahead and put this quote at the bottom, you know, good conversation is as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard to sleep after. So if any of you feel motivated, inspired, or want to chat about anything, please feel free to go ahead and reach out. So I'll go ahead and end it there, Dr. Yi, and we can go ahead and pass it on to the next person. You did great. Thank you very much, Ruben. Let's give him a reaction, round of applause. And next we'll have Stephanie up. Can anybody, everybody see my screen? Yes. Awesome. All right, so welcome everyone. As you all know, I am Stephanie Alvarado. Um, this is a little bit of my portfolio uh, for all of you. Um, so this is my welcome, uh, my homepage. It is um, very simple. Um, as some people know, I'm just very, very simple. Um, welcome, I am Stephanie, a graduate student in the Higher Education Administration and Leadership HEAL program at California State University, Fresno, and go dog. So um, I did add um, my social media platforms like Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, they have been very useful um, during my graduate career as well in my uh, professional development. So um, I and my social media platforms have became more of a professional platform for me. Um, so that's why I decided to include them in my portfolio. So a little about me, um, again, very simple. Um, one of the things beginning the graduate uh, program, um, I always viewed the undergraduate uh, journey or education as a journey. Everything that I've done up to this point has always been um, a journey. So um, a lot of my classmate, classmates can attest that I am always uh, saying like, it's part of the journey, it's part of the journey. And so, um, so for me, this is my um, professional and educational journey. Um, I'm a second year graduate student in HEAL. Um, part of my much of my work in higher ed has been within the trio student support services program as the specialist of the program. Um, so that has played a big role into the work that I do. Um, and so I was born and raised in the cent Central California, uh, Central Valley, Orosi, um, to immigrant parents from Mexico. I'm one out of five children and the first one in my family to pursue an undergraduate degree and obtain a bachelor's degree. And now I'm the first one in my family to pursue a master's and will be completing my master's within uh, three weeks, hopefully, right? Um, so um, that's just a little bit about me, uh, history, uh, background in regards to my um, professional journey. So I started off in College of the Sequoias. Um, as a student, I, at CSU Monterey Bay, I started as a student ambassador working for the admissions and outreach office, um, and as well working for the vice president of student affairs. So that's where, a lot of my experience, student experience came from. And so when moving on to coming back to the Central Valley, um, I wanted to go back into higher ed. And so I got hired on at TOS, College of the Sequoias, um, in the admissions and records office. And then after that into the TRIO Student Support Services Program. And now I serve as the COS Hanford um, Student Services uh, Specialist for the center. So. That's a little bit of background about me and my journey in higher ed so far. Um, as again, I identify as a first gen student, a college student and as, as a first gen professional now. Um, so that's a little bit about me and I intend to grow into the profession and my next step hopefully is the directorship. Um, so moving on to my philosophy statement. So a little bit about my philosophy, working with students, um, is to commit to serving the students and assist them to reach their own academic uh, potential. 
and success. Uh, for myself as a student, when I reflect on my academic journey and my profession, professional journey up to this point, um, there was individuals who were committed to the student success and transparency. And so um, part of my philosophy is to still carry that uh, commitment to students come first, to, um, to being transparent because as a student, again, I reflect that a lot of information was left out um, that was very important to my decision making as a student and as a professional. And so um, carrying those things forward um, and putting myself and working with students and putting myself in their shoes, um, that's what I think has allowed me to work with the students who I've worked with um, and help them along their way. So that's a little bit of my, my profession is always keeping, keeping the goal of being student focused um, and helping students succeed um, despite the differences that we may have in higher education. Um, so that is my philosophy statement. Um, my resume, moving on to my resume. Um, so again, just my education, my professional experience, uh, working in the TRIO programs, working at, at College of the Sequoias, and working as a student ambassador. And some of my skills, and then some of the, the university-wide committees that I'm in, um, and some of the roles I've taken on. So and then, so moving on to student affairs competency. So, um, so just really quickly advising and supporting, that has been one of my biggest functions in my role within the last couple of years. And so um, address the knowledge, skills, and dispositions related to providing advising and support to individuals and groups. And so um, this competency, uh, working with students firsthand, I did not understand uh, what I was doing. Um, and I saw students through one lens only. And so um, working with my first gen low socioeconomic students within the TRIO programs, I developed different, I had to use different lenses to work with them and practice um, how to speak with them, how to trust, how to build that trust and foundation with students. And so um, although I no longer work with my students directly, um, I do work with the campus as a whole. And so now I try to keep those things in mind that I learned um, during the TRIO programs um, to better serve the whole campus uh, student population and just always, again, keeping that philosophy in mind to be student focused. And so that one was the first one. And then student development and learning. So this one, again, uh, coming into the program, I did not know um, I always said I needed to learn the theory behind the practice. And so student development uh, and learning has helped me immensely to understand myself as a student, as a professional, and as well working with students. And so this one, not coming from not knowing or understanding student development theory um, to now being able to practice it, practices and subscribe to Yosu's um, theory, um, I'm able to work with students and see them as a whole. Um, and as well, this theory has, or this competency has allowed me to further explain what I want to do in the future um, in a different role. So, um, so this has allowed me one of my success stories for this competency. Um, I was able to, to be a part of the, our equity summit on our campus over at College of the Sequoias and work with different departments um, to better understand and have different perspectives on how we can support our students at the community college level and just bringing my own experience and um, having those discussions within our campus as a whole was very beneficial. Um, and again, that's something for me, that's something that I was allowed to grow in and continue and I hope to continue to grow in. So that is basically my um, portfolio and I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to our next presenter. Thank you, Stephanie. Round of applause for Stephanie. And then we've got Ruth on deck. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ruth. Um, I have, um, this has been a journey um, in learning everything that We've been able to accomplish thus far. Um, my, this is my um, beginning stages of and development of my e portfolio. 
Um, so, so far, um, you just see a little bit about me, um, that I am from a small town um, in the Central Valley, and I graduated from Cal State East Bay in 2017, and currently I am a HEAL um, student. So, and just as my colleague Stephanie said, that we will be graduating in less than a month, which is very exciting and scary at the same time. Um, so um, some of the things that um, I'll be sharing is my uh, philosophy statement to start off. Um, so to see my philosophy, philosophy statement is something that um, I really never thought of really of like what makes me me, what, why am I doing the work that I'm doing and really getting the opportunity to get this assignment and actually uh, reflect and um, really learn about why is it that I do the work that I want to do? Why, what motivates me to get up and help these students that um, need someone that is going to be there for them? And um, I have constantly said um, throughout um, our program, like, if you're in it for the money, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Um, it's something that, as um, I've shared with my colleagues, um, it's something that many times you see and, and it just, some people think, well, it's easy money. It's something that um, I can just do temporarily, but this is a job. This is more than a job. And currently I am not in um, higher ed, um, but that's what I am um, reaching for at, at the moment. Um, I do teach currently nutrition uh, less, uh, lessons to not only community, but to uh, students as well. Um, right now with everything that we're living, um, it's something that, um, you really need to make sure that you're using proper verbiage, proper um, information to everyone um, because there is a lot of things going on and, and you just want to make sure that you're serving everybody adequately. So for the first competency that I'll be sharing is my uh, uh, philosophy statement. So the philosophy statement really goes on to show um, just a little bit more about me and um, why I really um, I'm very pushing for education, um, something that I've always been brought up with, and it's explained in my philosophy, philosophy statement, is that um, education is something that nobody can take away from you. you. They can take away your car, they can take away your house, they can take away everything, but when you earn your degree, when you earn any certifications that you yourself earned, that's something that will always be yours, no matter what. And I know that even though it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, um, it's something that's well worth it. Um, especially now being a master's student, I have learned so much um, of who I am and really getting to know like my philosophy and what I hope to provide to students. Um, so which is what I described in uh, my philosophy statement and everything of, of just growing up. And um, just as my other colleague has also said, like. Um, first generation and really um, aiming to become the first in my family to have a master's degree, which is something that I never thought could be possible, especially with all that we've learned about like the imposter syndrome, which is very common. I feel like, especially if you are a person of color and in general, I feel like we can all feel that at one point in our journey, um, which is also something that I have learned while on this journey in HEAL. I didn't know it had a name and now I know that everything that I've been feeling throughout my journey had a name, has something that you can connect with your um, personal life. Um, so it's just one of them. So then um, I have another one that I would like to share, which is my technology competency, which um, for this competency I did, um, it was a very interesting, especially because of where we're at with um, COVID and I was able to learn just um, how it is that we can use um, technology and um, how we had to adjust in order to become virtual. So um, not only for my competency, but my artifact, I was able to use like just learning more about our e-portfolio and what this was before um, coming into this opportunity. I didn't know what an e-portfolio was. I, I never really had an idea, but getting the opportunity to be um, able to create my own uh, portfolio has been a great opportunity. Learning about um, how to put it all together um, has been great as well. Um, and then just going along and learning how um, to be a part of um, committees. I've been able to help um, my advisor, Dr. Yi, on how to um, help putting on certain parts of the symposium, which was great as well. 
um, just getting to just work with others and getting to adjust with how to put something on in the this virtual world that we're living in because sometimes especially at the beginning you may not think that it's possible especially because we before all of this all we knew was in person all of um the registrations everything you did online yes but at the culmination you were going to a location and you were um able to talk to others and network as well but here we're learning that you can do this all virtually yes of course we'd like to be in person but um currently it's not um, possible but um we are making the best of the situation while still making sure that we're learning how to be as a professionals which has been a great opportunity um and that is all for me um and i will hand it off to my next colleague Thank you so much, Ruth. All right, Kate, let's close us out. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming this afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Kate Spencer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am just a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Fresno, California, and I haven't left. Um, I graduated actually with my bachelor's degree from Fresno State in art and design. Um, so being able to do this website was actually a lot of fun. Um, after that, I actually have never worked within student affairs. I don't count the three months I was doing kind of office work within student involvement as student affairs. Um, but I do work as an administrative assistant for university advancement. So I actually work with a lot of our fundraisers here at Fresno State. And it's, it's a really interesting job. It's different. So being able to come into this program, it really kind of shed light on an area that we always collaborate with, but not something that I ever had a hands-on experience with. Um, I myself, I identify as a queer cisgendered woman, and I really have strong ties to the LGBTQ plus community. And during the HEAL program, that's actually where a lot of my topics ended up lying with. Um, so a lot of my studies, I tried to pick topics that involve the LGBTQ community. Um, with regards to my professional philosophy, I actually just included my full statement as a link, but I did write a brief as to kind of how I view student affairs. Um, coming in, I knew that I wanted to do everything I can to help students. And a lot of what I learned was trying to shift from just being able to provide everyone um, a chance for a higher education to making sure that we all had the opportunity and to get the help that we needed in, when, when going for our college degree. So shifting from an equality-based mindset to more equity-based mindset. Um, with that, I um, I shifted to really focusing on collaborating across the campus. You know, we can't just rely on one person to, to do everything. It, it really is a group effort. And so collaboration to me, it was a big point, whether you're in student affairs, whether you're in administration, it's really, really important that you have buy-in from across the university to do that. And with that, um, it kind of led me to having more of a focus on critically looking at our policies and procedures that are in place at, at our institutions and seeing what can be done better. You know, yes, we are serving students now, but there's always something that can be improved on. With that, I'll just briefly look at my resume. Um, like Ruben said, it just kind of goes through my personal profile my work, my education. Uh, just real brief, I, I mean, I've worked in higher ed for almost seven years now. It's kind of crazy, but I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot and I like to think I have a lot of um, insider knowledge as to kind of how at least my institution works. Um, with regards to the competencies, the one that I wanted to highlight is actually the assessment, evaluation, and research. I remember when we did our first class period and trying to figure out what we were proficient in, I knew immediately that I was not proficient in this in the slightest. And so 
when we got to our assignments, both in our research courses and our assessment courses, I found out that it really kind of inspired me to do a lot more thinking about what our learning and what we can contribute to scholarship actually has the power to do. Um, within student affairs, we all know that, you know, scholarship informs our practice. And so it was kind of the reverse. And now I'm providing scholarship to help someone else in their practice. And so for assessment evaluation and research, it's, you know, combining one's ability to be able to design and use assessment and research methods in order to, like I said, inform our practice and processes as student affairs professionals. And for that, I ended up using our um, thesis proposal for our research course, which I looked at um, LGBTQ students and how representation within um, cabinet level positions on campuses would have a, an impact on these students, if at all. Um, so I kind of explored that and I explored some literature revolving around um, visibility within faculty and staff and just found that nothing really kind of contributed to, to that aspect. Um, additionally, for this competency, we did assessment and with the help of my group, we were able to assess our LGBTQ plus programs and services at Fresno State. And I was able to provide our full assessment that we did as our PowerPoint presentation. So this includes both the assessment of the programs and services functional area itself, as well as one of their programs. And really these two area, these two assignments, I should say, really kind of inspired me to want to do more. Um, I've been thinking about even the last few months, seeing how I might be able to get involved in research projects and then really applying my assessment skills that I've learned for from this experience into my job, which may not necessarily be student affairs, but I think it's still all the same because inevitably we do help students. And so that's why I wanted to kind of highlight this section in particular, just because I think I was so pre-foundational in this, but now I can actually see where I can go. And so I think that's why this is probably one of my stronger ones that I, I really kind of led myself to. And um, with that, that's, that's all I have. So I'll go ahead and I'll stop sharing. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kate. Let's give her some fun reactions. Um, I'm going to get everybody back spotlighted. I'm going to ask everyone to come back on. All right. So I had a, I prepared a couple of questions to engage our panelists, but I also realized I didn't give a little bit of um, background to what the ePortfolio process was, but now that students have had a chance to uh, respond, just a, a basic uh, background. Th this ePortfolio process is one of the two culminating experiences that we offer to our students. And um, one is the thesis, um, and this is the ePortfolio. Um, and these this cohort of students is our first students to go through the ePortfolio process. So for folks coming in after, um, they, you know, congratulate them. They went through a very new process and I want to commend them for their patience and, um, you know, um, managing their anxiety in this process. Um, the uh, the ePortfolio highlights uh, 10 competencies at NASPA and ACPA, which are two of our leading um, um, higher education student affairs uh, professional organizations. And these 10 competencies are the 10 competencies that are um, guiding our profession, right? And so these are what our students, um, uh, uh, our students and emerging professionals are assessing themselves on, right? They're they're exploring, looking back in their two years, um, you know, looking at their assignments, and then just assessing where they're at. And so these students did a wonderful job with this. Um, the question that I had, uh, I have a couple of questions in mind, but first I want to hear um, just briefly from the four folks here. What did you learn about yourself 
in this process? Anyone can go first. Yeah, I can go. <laughs> um, so first off, I learned to have patience with uh, technology. <laughs> using I mean it was the whole e-portfolio process itself was it was it was really great because it allowed me to kind of like really learn how to how to work a website like that and really kind of broadcast myself out there and, and kind of get a sense of what I would like to portray to the random you know or just to anyone on the internet about me and so it really helped me kind of develop and kind of get my I guess my self presentation in line and how I would want to present myself to just anybody essentially. So that's one thing I really liked about it. And, and like I said, it taught me a lot of patience on, on doing a website and web designing or all that good stuff. So. <laughs> I'll go next. Um, the one thing that I think this process taught me was one, the chance to be able to reflect on everything I've done over the last two years um, and just to see the growth that I've had. Um, I had a lot of preconceived notion coming in about what I would learn, what I would experience, not knowing that there would be competencies associated with it, but to see me being able to do an assignment and to see how, how it fits in was really it was really nice actually to know that, yes, I'm actually working towards something. And not only that, but to know I have plans after, you know, after our, our program ends for in literally less than a month. And I know like, oh, I, I can now go and do this. Like I have goals in mind. And so that's kind of been really, really nice about the experience. Um, I can go next. Um, I think that this experience has really like been a way that I can reflect on myself. Um, just as uh, Ruben has said, um, I'm not very tech savvy. Um, so it definitely did teach me how to get out of my comfort zone because um, a lot of the times like it's just easy to here's who I am, but this time you have to put it all together for the world to see basically. And, and you're basically like screaming, this is me. Um, in a different form, um, which was great as well. Um, I think that it taught me how to see all the growth that I've done and all, um, all the stuff that I still need to um, be able to complete in the future and, and see where I want to be because a lot of the times like we as HESA professionals have done so much work already thus far in the program and like my colleagues have said, it's a way to reflect and look back and see the progress and growth that you have done throughout this whole journey. Because I mean, when we started in fall 2019, I was like, well, we're never going to graduate. <laughs> and now we're on the verge of graduation. And it's something that it was nice just to see all that we've done. And just like Kate said, like where we shall be in the future. So uh, for me, it's um, staying organized. I used to be very organized, but this, like, I, I was kind of, you know, scolding myself just because I'm like, wow, we did all of this and where are all of my assignments at? So I had to go dig through all my assignments. And so, uh, so that's one of the things that I learned was like staying organized in grad school. I'm like, I thought I was better organized. However, through the process of the portfolio, um, and again, just kind of speaking back on like being first gen and the imposter syndrome that I faced. I know that a lot of my colleagues as well faced um, upon entering in sometimes in the spaces that we still take. Um, it, it was a good way to reflect and kind of validate myself in like the work that we like I've done, you know, um, sometimes when somebody asks, like, what do you do? What have you done? Um, this was a good way to kind of give myself my own power back um, to say, yes, I have the experience. Yes, I've done this before. Um, you know, employers can look at me and like, this is what I've done. These are my competencies. So um, 
just because we're in a safe space like i had that come to jesus moment or that like come to realization moment a couple of days ago where i saw myself in, in from the very beginning to the end and it was just more of like wow i've done this i've come this far like i've done this and so it's more of like it's your power and validating the work that you do so for me it, it was a very emotional process doing the portfolio um and i just learned a lot about myself and kind of give myself more kudos as to the work that i do on an everyday basis and what we bring to the table the comments are bringing up lots of uh pride and <laughs> emotions for for all of the learning that you've undergone. And you've actually started answering this second question for me. So I'm gonna flip it a little bit. Um, knowing what you know now in terms of, you know, studying the NASA ACP, ACPA competencies, um, what value do you think these competencies really have for our profession? Like what, like knowing what you do know now in your reflective process, like what perspectives can you share about how these competencies will help our profession. I can start. Um, I think there's a lot of value with having these competencies. And to go even deeper, I think the value is also there for having different levels. I know, for me, I found the importance of even being foundational is OK. I, I'm not expecting myself to be advanced within, within two years. And I think what's really nice about having these competencies is that there's always room to grow and to better yourself. And so for me, that's kind of how I, I view the competencies and their value to the profession is always having just that one extra thing to strive for because I know that's gonna end up benefiting our students no matter what institution we work at. Um, I can go next. I think, um, as I mentioned, I did not really know anything about this, um, the competencies. It's kind of like a guide in a sense. It's kind of like, if you're gonna go take your drivers at training, you get that little booklet. So it kind of reminded me of that because um, you have it all in one place. It's all put together and just as Kate mentioned, um, it's okay to be at the beginning. And sometimes it's like, I do see the amazing work my colleagues do and, and many of them are in higher ed already working with students and I'm um, not there just yet. So it was really um, great to see just where, um, where is it that I can grow and what I can do to achieve those and how it can help me know where I'm at. Like it was just really a way to guide myself and, and really reflect of, um, just all the work that still needs to be done within myself and how I can better serve the students that I hope to, to work with one day. I'll go next. Um, so for me, um, I think it was a great tool, um, ACP the NASPA competencies to assess myself. Um, when we first did this assignment, like our first semester in, in the program, I was like, oh my God, I have no knowledge. I have nothing on this. And however, um, now and just trying, you know, working in, 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 the, in the profession, it's like, okay, now I need to work on this. Okay, I'm foundational now i need to work on other areas i need to understand these areas and so for me i think have been very beneficial um and like kate said like it's okay that we're foundational it's okay that we don't know because um in higher ed we're continuing to learn so i think for me it's a great way to know where i'm at and what i need to work on um, for myself Yeah, to build off of all my colleagues, uh, very similar. I, I just liked how it provides the three levels and just like the three, three different phases, I guess. You can just see yourself at. And yeah, like uh, like Stephanie had mentioned, like I remember getting the assignment for the first time and, and Dr. Hernandez is Dr. Susanna. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to read all this, like, you know, go through all of this. And so um, 
it took some time, but it was super beneficial in the end because I actually got to go through the different, you know, the different levels and then just get a description of all these, you know, core competencies that go into student affairs and, you know, higher education. And so it really, it really expanded my scope and it really helped me put uh, like, like theory to practice, but practice into a visual construct of, of kind of the work that we're doing. And so, uh, yeah, that's a to, long story short, that's, that's how I, I've seen these competencies. That's how it's helped a lot. Good, thank you. All right, um, healers in the audience, questions, especially from maybe our first years leading up, thinking this is up in your future. Don't waste this opportunity to ask some questions. I have a question. What were your guys' challenge in your journey or um, in your the program now that you guys are ending? And then if you guys can, what's one word you would say that you would take away from learning in the program? I'm going to ask one person to answer and then make room for other questions. So the question was, what was one challenge that we've had throughout the program, correct? So I, I can answer this. So, yeesh. Um, so for me, I know Ruth had mentioned imposter syndrome, and I think that was that was one of the realizations I've had to come to terms with many times was just like, no, like you're, you're doing it. You're in a master's program. And ever since COVID hit, it was even harder because we went from in-person instruction to me, you know, my colleagues, you know, twice to twice a week, three times, you know, three classes to just online remote. And so it was just like, I had to constantly remind myself like, no, you're in a master's program. You're going to get a master's degree. Like you're, you're doing it you know, like you're keeping busy, you're doing it because, you know, COVID was a tough time and I, I lost a part of myself during that time and it was a struggle and I had to get back on track. And, and this program really definitely helped me get back on track, just having this, this network, this support of my colleagues and meeting with my professors on a daily basis. It was, it was great. So that, that's definitely one challenge. And one word of advice I could give, right? Uh, persevere. Uh, it gets better. There's, you know, like, they mentioned in the chat, you know, like the faculty and the, and the staff for you are super intentional with their assignments. Like they do everything for a reason. Like little did we know we're going to come back to these competencies. You know, we started first semester, little did we know we're going to come back to them our final semester. So they're super intentional, trust the process. The faculty and staff are amazing. You'll love them. We all love them. I'm pretty sure I can speak on behalf of all of us. So just persevere, trust the process. Thanks, Ruben. Um, all right, we have a question in the chat from Diana Hernandez. Which competency was the most challenging for you to demonstrate your proficiency in? Then how did you finalize it? I'm gonna ask two people to speak and then two people to put in the chat, to answer in the chat. I'll speak on mine. Um, so for me, it was the student um, theory. For me, uh, just because it it came up, I, I it wasn't difficult, but when writing it in my portfolio, um, I, I reflected a lot back in uh, one of my job interviews. They asked, you know, what uh, uh, student theory do you do you subscribe to and so I went back and I, I pulled up our student development um, theory book. I, I just kind of went back to the first textbooks we had. And so writing it on, on the competencies, I was stuck because I felt like mine had shifted um, a lot, and especially being in different roles now um, in, in, in the work that I do. So, um, so I kind of had to reevaluate myself and how, again, how I saw myself as a student um, and then as well as a, as a, in doing the work that I do. So that's how I finalized mine. And so, um, during my, my interview, um, as well, like I went in that direction and that's, I feel like that's how I defined it. So 
the way I answered it in the job interview was how I defined it for my competency as well. Ruth or Kate, do you have any additions? Um, yeah, the question was which one was our most difficult, right? Yes. Um, I think for me, probably the most difficult would have to be um, the assessment. Um, when I can't remember the whole name right now, but um, the one dealing with assessment, especially because I had really no knowledge of um, assessing and how, what exactly is the process that we take. Um, and doing um, assessment has really been eye opening, especially in the program, because it gives you an understanding of what assessment is and how crucial it is in higher education um, and the work that we do. Um, I think really um, coming together to choose the one that um, would fit best was a little bit harder as well. Um, but like just as Ruben said, um, all of the assignments that we have are intentional. Um, they come together and they figure out what would be best for us. And especially I think that with COVID hitting, I know that um, whenever we had our first classes at the beginning of the fall, um, our professors had no idea what was to come the following semester. And they had to rally together to see, okay, how can we adjust our assignments to make sure that we fit what needs to be taken care of and especially with our competencies. So I think that it just was, um, just all of the assignments I feel like had their own purpose and I was able to find out which one could fit at the end. Thank you very much, Ruth, for that. All right, I, we have our final question from Diana Rea um, Flores. What made you decide on the ePortfolio route? Um, I can go real quick. Um, for me, it was also evaluating my journey and where I was like professionally, like with my work um, and what I also have to understand, like what can I handle? Because of course, like um, deciding on what opportunity there's um, the e-portfolio and as well as um, having your thesis, you know, it's also knowing yourself and what you can handle. Of course, like it's great to say, um, you know, I did my thesis and it's a wonderful opportunity, but I also, um, uh, Dr. Pryor had us do a previous assignment, which had to do a lot with um, a lot of writing and it kind of helped me link towards um, uh, deciding which one I wanted to do. And I did choose um, like the assignment that I thought the best for me, because also um, knowing that we would do a new portfolio, it gave me a lot of um, better understanding of what these competencies were. Yes, like throughout all the assignments, we got to learn a little bit more, but really this assignment has given me so much more knowledge of where myself, um, where I see myself in these competencies and just reflecting on where I need to improve and what I can do to better um, have myself grow in all of the companies. So I really, really like this assignment um, and I chose it because it was the best for me currently and where I'm at professionally and uh, personally as well. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, for me, it's very much like Ruth. I like to see how far I've come in my journey. Again, because I wasn't, I don't have a real big hand in student affairs, but I also really liked it in the fact that I'm very much the person of, yes, I've done this. Let me show you what I've done. I like having that proof to show that I was competent in something. And so when the e-portfolio was announced, I almost immediately said, yes, I want to do that because I like having that backup to show I've, I've accomplished it and let me show you how well I've accomplished it. So that's kind of why I chose it. It's, it sounds really simple, but that, that was one of the main reasons I did. Thank you so much. I'm unfortunately um, have to close out our session due to us moving into our um, final closing out ceremony. I want to thank all of our presenters, Kate, Ruth, Ruben, and Stephanie. Y'all showed up. Um, thank you so much. You've made me so proud, made our HEAL program so, so proud. Not only that, I want to thank all of the healers and the guests on attending. 
Um, you showed up for our community and I want you to, um, you know, look at all the names of all the supporters in this room. I'm going to invite you really quick. Um, please, un if you're interested in being in the camera, um, in the, the photo, uh, turn on your cameras so that I can take a screenshot. I'll give you about five seconds to do that. We'll do that real quick. Okay, folks are coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, join us. We look so good. <laughs> okay, all right, coming on. Okay, I'm gonna count to three. Everyone look at the camera, okay? One, two, three. All right. You look good. He looks awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this photo. Check social media for this. Uh, in the future, again, thank you. And then we will see you at our closing session. Uh, don't miss it, Dr. Hernandez is closing us out. All right, bye everyone. Thank you.